And God also teaching us that Muslims would definitely be startled, would definitely be surprised that people in believing things which are against faith, for instance, they come out with claims of coincidence. We talked about mitochondria, we talked about the cell, we talked about the protein molecules, which are, which are just so much intricately woven, like lace. And it is apparent by means of scientific evidences that for only one protein molecule to occur, there needs to be other protein molecules. And then those ones, they come out with claims, allegations, saying that those are only through coincidences. That is definitely very interesting. For instance, while they're just walking on the street, if they were to find a telephone, they have a strict understanding, they have a clear understanding that that telephone surely has a creator, but they find all kinds of living beings all around them, but they don't appreciate that all those living beings have a creator. They say that there was only a muddy water, and in that muddy water some kind of microbes occurred, and then those turned out to be like worms, and then those worms started to be like Einstein and also all other scientists, and those started looking into their own bodies to see how they came up out of that mud, that blind mud inside that water, that deaf mud. It, started, it starts seeing itself in three dimensions, it starts hearing itself in three dimensions. And suddenly that mud has an understanding of taste, has an understanding of touch, and then it suddenly has an understanding of smell. And definitely they say that those are only out of coincidences. Most probably you have lost your attention, you have lost your way of understanding. You are asleep. That is definitely a miracle. And all our organs, they are more complex than the technology that human beings can produce. More complex, for instance, our body, our DNA is more complex than the cutting edge technology computer, for instance. The brain is much more swift, much more fast in its computations. And when you ask those persons, how did that brain come out? They say, it's coincidence. They so much marvel at how the brain works, and then they come out with, again, claims of coincidence. And at least 7.5 billion of people in this world, they believe in this fallacy of coincidence. People should think, everyone needs to understand, why did I come here? Why I'm living in this world? Why is there this kind of a three-dimensional colorful world around me? And when you ask that person, who created you? He's not aware. Who is his creator? And when we ask that person, what does the creator want from you? They say that they are not aware again. And they look into the muddy water and they find it reasonable, really. For instance, they say that you place grass, you place some kind of material in glass. For instance, in a closed setting, if you put something there, then insect comes out of what is kept inside there. That's inside that place. And they say that microbes and bacteria appear. Those do not come out of coincidences, because when you look into a bacteria, you find a, you, you find a, an environment there, you find a setting there, which is much more complex than when compared with the city of Istanbul. And then they say that they build electronic brains, they build computers, they have extensive research capacity, and what they attain out of all that research is coincidence. You see creation everywhere. Creation is shouting at yourself, and you ignore all these facts. And God is addressing to your conscience. And you don't want to hear that voice that comes to your conscience. Is it so hard to appreciate the creation around you? Even a seven-year-old will definitely see the clear signs of this creation.
And Dawkins comes out with a new theory, saying that atoms cannot come together with coincidences, but if there is light and energy put on them, on themselves for a certain period of time, then they would come out with life. Then they may put energy to Dawkins for a long time and let us see what happens to him. They don't want to accept creation and this is all these fallacies, all these weirdness they come out with. They first said that it was aliens. Now they say that light and energy, they accept that to be in place of God. And where will that energy come from? Do they, do they talk about sun's energy? They say that sun's energy and lightning came to that mud, muddy water, and that muddy water, out of coincidences, one lightning after the other, sunlight, light after light. And then they say that suddenly Einstein came out of those mud, muddy water, and it started looking itself by means of its 3D camera-like eyes, it started seeing with its stereo sound system hearing. Einstein starts to, starts to research how he came out to be. And they say that it's, it's only coincidences. I think it's embarrassed when we name their claims to be coincidences. You say that it's only coincidence. They say that it's really misunderstood there's another so-called scientist, he's just jumping, he's a chubby one. He says that we don't say coincidence, but you say that you only talk about coincidences, chance events, randomness, because one thing is either created, otherwise it's out of coincidence. There's no, no other alternative. And the presenter asks, if the parts of a car were spread somewhere, and through years out of coincidences, could those parts come together to build a car? And they say that surely that will happen. Look at their embarrassing position. They have lost all their credibility, those evolutionists. They have no limit, really. And I wonder how they will bring an explanation to all such fallacies, all such lies in the hereafter. Because their claims of coincidences, their claims of all this chance events and randomness, they say that out of mutations and out of all those coincidences, you only could be blind because mutation could only result in blindness and mutations could only result in weird beings with no aesthetic appearance, with all kinds of pathology. And this is what they find in the hereafter. In the hereafter, they turn out to be such beings which cannot walk, which just drag on the floor, which go blind. And this is how God makes them see what they were claiming in their lifetime. And this is their own allegations. This is their own, own statements for coincidence. And this is what they find themselves to appear like in hereafter. And in the hell, again, they will be given all kinds of weird food, which has no taste. Because in this world, they find all beautiful foods, grapes and pomegranates and all the other beautiful fruits are served to them in this world. But in hell, only bad food will be served to them, which has no taste, which, which is all disgusting. And according to their claims, this is what they find in the hell, and in heaven, in the gardens of paradise, God creates all the beauties because God is the creator. And in hell, there's fire, there's energy that they were talking about, there's muddy water in hell. There is all that mud that they're looking for in, in, a hell, in hell setting. There's filth, there, there's dirt, dirt and energy, and nothing comes out of that filthiness. And let us see how they will give an explanation to this in the hereafter. And there's all beautiful berries and fruits and animals, birds, all things beautiful and so aesthetic in this world. And they will need to account for explaining how all these beauties appeared in this world and they will remain eternally in hell. And they will be asked by God, just give an explanation. How did, did all these come out out of coincidences? 
and they will be given two billion years, three billion years, and they will wait and nothing will come out of that mud, that fire in hell. There is lightning in hell. But but after even billions of years pass, they will all all remain to be the same. But in, in, a, in the heaven, in paradise, where believers are living, there will be all beauties, the fruits, and all the beautiful servings for believers, because all are created by God. And when Dawkins is asked if he could give only one beneficial mutation, example, he just looks in the air for two and a half minutes, and he, ca he cannot give an answer, only one, one beneficial example of a mutation. And then he says, let us turn off the camera. Just say that there is none. And you had stated that they need to bring only one example of a fossil, fossil of an intermediary form. You said that you would give a trillion Turkish euros for anyone who would bring such kind of an example, but they could not even bring only one. I'm presenting them 600 million examples of fossils that are evidences for creation. I'm asking only one from them, but for so many years we've been wait waiting and they could never bring even one example. And you had invited Dawkins here that you would be hosting him in the best setting, in the best venues here, but he said that he does not want to come. But you talk with Christian Catholics, you talk with rabbis, but why are you fearful in talking to me? You may come here and you will, you will get your adequate answer. I said I will only ask for 15 minutes of him, but despite that he did not come here and he, he would never do that. They are aware of creation, but they, they all ignore this fact. Most probably they believe in God, but they have no fear of God. That is why they want to come out with some childish way of speaking. And they say that it is the anions that made the protein molecules. And God is teaching us that despite their conscience confirms because of their arrogance, because of their arrogance, they, they ignore and they are in disbelief of all these facts.